today on Cattle Dog Garage. What's up everybody, Adam here. So today I'm going to be doing a little maintenance on my hot rod Chevy Dually. The engine I had built just got to 2,000 miles on it and today it's going to be getting its fourth oil change. I had also installed another rev limiter on the truck. It's another Petronix Flamethrower 3 digital HEI module. I had went ahead and gave Petronix another chance being as the product is actually made in the United States. Now for those of you who don't know, I had installed a Flamethrower 3 module in my last video and it was a failure. Because it had failed, I had gotten another 6 AL box from a subscriber. I had went and met him about a half an hour south of my house. We had bullshitted for a while. He told me about his race car and about how his wife drag races and they're going to be going to nationals. So he picked my brain for a little bit. Now hopefully I will be able to make it over to their place and see if I can help them find some extra horsepower they may be leaving on the table. Now being as he helped me, I figured when I'm able, I would help him with the program in any way that I can. That and I just love finding me some extra horsepower. But anyway, I figured if the Flamethrower 3 module don't work this time, I have that MSD6 AL box to fall back on. So big thank you to subscriber Bill Morton. Now I hadn't planned on exchanging the module, but like I said, it's actually made in America. And at this point, it's easier to install the module than to install another MSD box. So we will be testing the Flamethrower 3 module on a cruise with some full throttle straight line pulls. Now bear with me and keep in mind that on the full throttle pulls that I'm trying to steer, shift and manage a camera at the same time. So I won't be able to shift very fast, but we will still be getting after it. So me and the dogs make our way to the garage, open it up, start the truck up and warm it up. And now we're off to go take a little cruise, test the module and do some full throttle pulls. Now I had already said this in another video, but excuse the squeaky clutch, that shit really drives me nuts. But welcome to the SM465 square body Chevy life. I'm sure there are those of you who are wondering what the engine is in this thing. Now I'm not going to go into too much detail, I'll just give a simple description. Now for those of you who don't know, the engine in this truck is a small block Chevy. More specifically, it's a 383 that I had done about 60 plus hours of headed, mon headed manifold porting and modifications to. It's got an Eagle crank and rods, flat top pistons, 10.2 to 1 compression. Now I'm not going to go over the cam specs right now. The cam specs will be given in an upcoming video. I did give them in another video, but I had accidentally given the wrong cam specs. I do know the cam specs, but I just say the wrong thing sometime on accident part of my CRPS. Now this engine's making 470 horsepower, 500 foot-pounds of torque. I had built this engine specifically for torque, but I extracted as much horsepower as I could with the parts I had without affecting my torque, output, and RPM goals. With all this work I had done to the head and manifold, I could have easily built a 530 to 550 horsepower screamer but that's a little unrealistic for this truck's intended purpose, but it would have been a hell of a lot more fun. Now I had accidentally said in my last video that I had built this engine in 2018. Well, I had actually meant to say 2021 because that's when I actually built it. I had actually bought this truck for my dad in 2018. Now I had also accidentally said in my last video that this truck will do 90 in third gear. That's just another thing I said wrong. In third gear, this truck will actually do over 100 miles per hour at 6,000 RPMs. It crosses the finish line in the quarter mile at the very top of third gear, pulling 6,000 RPMs. Now you guys will see this when we make our passes in a little while, that I only have to shift one time. Now that's because I start off in second gear, and the split between second and third is so far apart and third gear has such long legs that I could run right out the back door in third gear without having to shift into fourth gear. Now if I had to shift into fourth gear before the end of the quarter, I would probably run closer to a 14 second quarter mile. Now this truck's previous best pass in the quarter, as I said in my last video, was an impressive 1348 at 102. Now for 6,000 pounds, that is pretty impressive. 
but today we're about to lay down the quickest pass this truck's ever made. Today we're going to run a 1328 at 104 miles per hour. That's even with a small amount of tire spin off the line. Now later in this video I'll break down the pass on paper and explain why the 60 foot, 330, eighth mile and quarter mile times and miles per hour for each one, or the, why they are the way they are. Now I had said in my last video that I was going to be buying an AFR gauge this month to test my carb tuning skills, but I had recently gotten the opportunity to take a trip somewhere about 2,500 miles away, so I'm going to be saving money for that. I'm not going to say where I'm going, but you guys will be extremely, extremely surprised. It will be the furthest I've ever been away from home, and I'm sure it will be the best trip I've ever taken, and I'm sure it's going to be one hell of an experience to say the least. I just figured I'd throw that out there so nobody thinks I'm flaking out on buying an AFR gauge. I'm still going to be buying a gauge, it's just going to have to wait a little while because I am not going to miss the opportunity to take this trip. So this pass we're about to make right here was my best quarter mile pass in this truck since building the engine. I really really wish I had somebody recording from the outside. If I had, you guys would have seen the front of the truck come up extremely extremely hard. I could see in my video editing software, which can break stuff down to hundredths of a second, that the front of the truck came up, went down, came up again, and then the truck moved forward. I'm pretty sure what happened is when I dropped the clutch and floored it, that the front of the truck came up so hard and so fast, it then unloaded the tires, which caused the tires to spin a little bit, which then allowed the front of the truck to drop and after the front of the truck had dropped, it got traction again, which then brought the front of the truck back up, and then it started rolling out after that. Now you may notice at the end of this quarter mile also, that I'm holding third gear at 6,000 RPMs for longer than ideal. Say if you were trying to accelerate to top speed as fast as possible. I was trying to avoid having to shift into fourth gear and lose some time from the gear shift because like I said, if I had tried shifting into fourth gear, I probably would have ran closer to 14 seconds. We had just ran that out to the half mile. Now I'm not going to say how many miles per hour we just ran, but I'll just say that it was a hair over 22 seconds to get to the half mile from a 13 28 quarter mile. So now that we're done testing the rev limiter, taking the passes, we're going to cruise home and then get busy, and then we'll go over the numbers on the personal best pass for that truck. Now being as this truck weighs 6,000 pounds and it's got the ability to run a 1328 quarter mile at 104 miles an hour is rather impressive and that all boils down to proper engine combination selection, mainly camshaft selection and everything that is involved with the selection of that. Now I think a lot of you guys will probably think the camshaft in this truck is quite a bit bigger than it is and I think you guys will be rather surprised when I go over the engine in this truck and in my one of my videos upcoming. In one of my upcoming videos, I'm gonna be going over proper camshaft selection and the influential factors that go along with that. But for right now, I'm gonna scratch the surface on proper camshaft selection. Now I do intend to give some of my knowledge on engine optimization and camshaft selection and everything that affects the selection of the proper camshaft specs, such as the induction system. For example, carb intake cylinder head characteristics intake and exhaust valve diameter to throat percentages compression cubic inches rod length intended rpm goals as far as horsepower and torque or even booster nitrous and it gets a lot deeper than that as i said these are just a simple example and i'm just scratching the surface on this now it's all too common for people to overcam an engine and that ultimately has a negative effect on engine performance sure it sounds cool but the engine's not going to perform like an engine with the camshaft specs that have been properly selected. The most important part of proper camshaft selection 
is the proper lobe separation angle selection. Now valve event timing has the biggest effect on engine performance. Once you have the proper lobe separation angle selected, you can then select lift and duration numbers based on all the influential factors I had previously said. Now I hope there are some people out there that want to learn some of the knowledge that has basically been tucked away from the general public and the average racer. Me and my furry little hemorrhoids are back out in the garage. The flamethrower 3 module was a success. I had only had one little issue with it. When I had first installed it, I had set the rev limiter to 6,000 RPMs and it was only limiting the RPMs to 5,700. So I had pulled it out and I had almost sent it back and I had reinstalled it and I had set the rev limiter to 6,300 uh, and it worked. Now it's limiting the RPMs to 6,000. So I had to set it 300 RPMs beyond what it was supposed to, but it turned out to work. So I'm gonna give it a chance still. And if it leaves me stranded somewhere, I at least got my old module in my glove box. And I have that other MSD box to fall back on that Bill had given me. So if it leaves me stranded, I'll let you guys know. Now, also I'm extremely surprised to have ran that 1328 quarter mile um, at 104 miles an hour. I think a lot of that was honestly because of the dual rear wheels and the all-terrain tires on the back. That and the coarse chip seal road. I had never pulled the front end of that truck up like that before. And I honestly think that truck has a little more in it than that uh, 1328. I was honestly surprised in the first place that it had two more tents in it from the 1348 in the first place. But uh, yeah, we're gonna move on now. Um, get, on, get on with a little mating with Nancy, or, or in other words, maintenance. And then I'm gonna drop a little lubrication knowledge on you guys. So let's get on with it. Actually, before we get started, I got a quick question for anybody that wants to leave an answer. What do you think this engine would run if you put it in a car that weighed, I don't know, 3,500 pounds or less? Or maybe even like a Fox body that weighs 2,800 pounds, I think. Um, let me know in the comments. Now we're gonna be doing a little maintenance on my hot rod Chevy Dually. I'll be going over what oil I recommend for engines with flat tapped cams or break-in of flat tapped cams or piston rings. So if you have an engine with a flat tapped cam or are building an engine with or without a flat tapped cam and you are not sure if the oil you use has everything a flat tapped cam break-in or piston ring break-in requires, I highly recommend you check out the line of products I'm about to go over for everybody. So I get started with the oil change and while I'm doing the oil change, I'm gonna go over a little information on the oil I use. The average oil at your auto parts store doesn't contain everything a flat tapped cam engine needs. Some people will use Rotella because it contains small amounts of ZDDP, but this oil I'm about to recommend using by Driven Racing Oil has everything an engine with a flat tapped cam needs. The first one is HR1. It is a 15W50. The second is HR2, which is a 10W30. Now these oils, I would recommend running every oil change after the engine break-in period. The next series of oils are the BR series. Now these oils are for engine break-in and I recommend the BR series for any engine for initial start and during the break-in period. The BR oils help chemically seal piston rings. It is ZDDP fortified for camshaft protection upon break-in and protects bearings and journals. The standard BR oil is a 15W50. Then the BR30 is a 10W30. They also have a BR40, which is a 10W40. Now I'm not sponsored or affiliated with this company in any way. I just have confidence in their products. Now this next thing I'm about to recommend is Driven Racing Engine Assembly Gel or Grease. It is also ZDDP fortified and during the engine break-in, it becomes soluble with the oil. Now the lube that comes with the flat tapped camshaft in the box, just throw that shit away. I've never trusted that stuff and for good reason. I've seen flat tapped camshafts fail upon break-in for no other reason than the lube that was used. This stuff will stay on your camshaft for weeks, even months, even in hot weather, whereas the stuff in the camshaft box runs off the cam in less than two minutes. I will never assemble an engine without this stuff. You can put it on your cam, your face of your lifters, your rocker arm tips, the tips of valve stems, 
the fulcrum ball of non-roller fulcrum rockers, push rod tips, and etc. When using this stuff as long as it is applied properly, assuming the engine was assembled properly, the timing is set properly, fuel bolts are primed, and as long as you keep the engine running for 20 to 25 to 30 minutes at 2000 to 2500 RPMs, there are basically no worries as far as camshaft failures. I highly recommend any products from Driven Racing. Now I'm not saying that there aren't other oils out there that will fit the bill, but I have had great success with these products and I would like to pass some of my success on to anybody that's interested or watching. I hope someone can use and finds this little information I gave on Driven Racing products helpful. Now before we call this information session done, no maintenance job is complete without the Uncle Bucko Maintenance Completion Star of Approval. If you're wondering where to get these maintenance stickers, just go to the oldmansgarage.shop and you'll find them there. If I remember right, the maintenance stickers are $3 and you get 5 of them. They have two different kinds and they're rather handy. And if you haven't subscribed to the Old Man's Garage, you should check it out and give Bill a sub. Bill and his family are really good people and Bill has helped me in many ways. This is the day I was editing, well, one of the many days I was editing the video. Um, I had forgot to record something the day I was recording this stuff. So I'm going to go over it now. It was the results for that 1328 pass. We're going to break down the numbers. There's like three or four more passes I made that day that I didn't put in the main part of the video because it was already getting too long that I'm going to be putting at the end of the video. So those will all be right in a row, boom, boom, boom. So. Sorry it's taking me so long to get this video out. This is the longest I've gone without putting a video out so far. Um, I'm not gonna go into why. I've just, I'll just leave it at this. I've been having a little more issues with my brain and dealing with stuff. And I've had a hell of a time getting my thoughts on paper and just as hard of a time getting those words that are on the paper into words that y'all can hear. So I appreciate everybody bearing with me and in between me taking so long with putting videos out but anyway i'm going to stop talking let's get to breaking that pass down back to your originally scheduled program all right so we'll start here with the 60 foot we are in a 60 foot 1.91 seconds at 32 miles an hour which for 6,000 pounds that thing was moving pretty good out of the hole now after the 60 foot of course is the 330. Now in between the 60 and the 330 was the 23 shift, which is quite the big split, which ultimately slowed down the 330 time to 5.58 seconds at 56 miles an hour. Now the time between the 60 and the 330 is 3.76 seconds. And we had gained 24 miles an hour within that 270 feet between the 60 and the 330. Now from the 330 to the 660, which is the eighth mile, of course, we're recovering from the split between the two, three shift. So we're coming out of the bottom of third gear, coming out of the 330, which ultimately slowed down the eighth mile time to 9.04 seconds at 74 miles an hour. Now this truck wouldn't be a good eighth mile truck by, just because of the way it's geared. Um, the time between the 330 and the 660 was 3.46 seconds, and we had gained 22 miles an hour in the 330 feet between the 330 and the 660. Now we're getting from the 660 to the 1320, which is, of course, is the quarter mile. We're getting into the mid to top of third gear, coming out of the eighth mile which is getting in the mid range of third gears where all the torque's at. And the torque doesn't drop off very fast. And you can feel it when the horsepower comes in. And you'll be able to see it in the video, the truck starts pulling harder. And then all the way across the finish line, we're doing 6,000 RPMs to run a time of 13, 28 at 104 miles an hour. Now the time between the 660 and the 1320 4.42 seconds we'd gain 20 26 miles an hour sorry in the 660 feet between the eighth mile and the quarter mile 
So if nobody knew how to do this on paper, just from your footage and your times and get that result. This is actually rather helpful. Uh, knowing what your rig's doing in between all these can tell you a lot. But I don't know, there's that. I figured some people might find that interesting. So now we'll get back to the video. Hi everybody, I'm gonna call it a day and wrap this up. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And I hope somebody can use that piece of information I gave about the oil. Now feel free to leave me a comment. I'm sorry I haven't been putting videos out. Like I told you guys last time, this is a damn struggle. So I sure do wish I could put videos out more for you guys. But I guess this will just have to do for now. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Um, to my subscribers, I appreciate you. If you're new, be sure to subscribe. Um, everybody like. And if you've never watched The Old Man's Garage, or you have, be sure to subscribe for Bill. Like I said, him and his family are really good people. So check him out. So everybody stay safe and stay humble. See you next time, everybody. Now this pass coming up right here is definitely not gonna be the best pass of the day. You'll hear when I take off that the tires start spinning and then slowly continues to spin the tires all the way through the intersection and beyond which ultimately makes me have to short shift out of second and into third because I didn't get all the speed out of second because the tires were spinning, which ultimately slowed our pass down. Whoa.